So team, keep it clean. Huge news dropped with the Baltimore Ravens yesterday, and we got a lot, a whole lot to cover. First and foremost, starting with Lamar Jackson, John Harbaugh made the best and the correct decision when it came to the Steelers game that Lamar Jackson will not be playing in this game at all. It's going to be the Tyler Huntley show. Said Josh Johnson going to be the backup quarterback. Even Malik Cunningham, he'll get some action at wide receiver, special teams, and maybe some quarterback too. But Lamar Jackson will not be playing, and that is the best decision that John Harbaugh could have made because just you don't want Lamar Jackson out there in a meaningless game, in a, in a game that doesn't do anything for the Baltimore Ravens whatsoever. So thank you, John Harbaugh, for making that decision. Shout out to Snoop. Because Tyler Huntley, go ahead and take care of business. Go ahead, because this is Snoop's, this is probably his his last game as a Baltimore Ravens starting. Like, this this is probably it. Like, because Snoop, like, he, he's going to be a free agent after this year. And you know that backup money? Hey, that backup money be going crazy, man. So, Snoop, put that tape out, put that film out so you can get a nice job next year, whether it be a backup as a starter, as a backup turning into a starter, whatever it may be. Snoop, we rooting for you. Knock them Steelers out the playoffs because that would be some nice get back for the Baltimore Ravens. Team, keep it clean. We got a lot more to talk about. Before we get into it, hey, y'all been going crazy. We are 200 subscribers away from 72K. Y'all been going crazy subscribing to the channel, and I appreciate y'all. Keep it all the way up. All the way up, man. Thank y'all for what y'all been doing. So keep subscribing to the channel. Turn your notifications on. And also, leave a like on the video, which y'all have been doing, which I really appreciate. So thank you very much. I, I really love y'all. Y'all like y'all really make me very, very happy. Because the way that y'all support how great of people y'all are, thank you for what y'all be doing. Now, Ravens got some more significant, great, amazing, surprising news yesterday because our Darius Washington who earlier this year, John Harbaugh said he's most likely out for the season, but it's not confirmed. He never said he was out for the whole season, but he said he's most likely out for the season. He had surgery, and usually when you have surgery versus rehab, it's like, oh, yeah, you're going to be out for the season. We'll see you next year. But Ardarius Washington. <laughs> it's so cool, man. <laughs> Ardarius Washington has been designated to return, man. Uh, Darius, I thought this dude was done for the year, but no, he's back, man. Uh, Darius Washington. So Ravens get even more quality depth in the secondary, especially because Daryl Worley, he might be out for a little bit. But for, for uh, Darius Washington to be, to, to be back, because he was originally their starter in the slot. He was their starting nickel corner. Of course, he could play some safety as well. So you get even more versatility. Uh, on defense You get even more quality depth On defense And you get a starter On defense man Oh man This like Everything is lining up For these Ravens man It, it, it really is Everything is lining up So This gotta be the year man This got It has to be the year Lamar Jackson He brought up some interesting stuff yesterday. He brought up stuff that's been on all of our minds. Uh, well, Lamar Jackson talked about just the mindset. The, the, the mindset, he said that he's ready and he, he's locked in and, and prepared for the playoffs. Uh, they brought up 2019. Who, so many people have continued to bring up 2019 and we get it. Yeah, but he said he got to let it go. We got to let it go. Let 2019 go. Let it be 2019. It's 2024. That was years ago. We got to move forward. And Lamar Jackson and, and the team is clearly locked in. Again, you, you, you see what the players this year. I know y'all saw the clip. Oh, my goodness. It was, a, uh, it was on the Ravens wire. But when they clipped it out, it was a, like a five, six-second clip where Lamar was like, calm down. Calm down. We got to stay locked in. We got to stay focused. And I'm like, man, you over here whooping these Dolphins up. Yeah, you're supposed to be hype. You're supposed to be energetic. You're supposed to be going crazy. Y'all putting up 56 points. But Lamar's like, no, we ain't with all that. I, we, we know what the task is at hand. So Lamar Jackson is continuing to show he got it. He got it. The mindset is there. The focus is there. Ravens know exactly what they got to do. And Justin Matabike, he mentioned it as well. He said, we got one goal. And that's to win the big one, the big one. And that is obviously the Super Bowl. Now, a play that has definitely been getting highlighted a lot uh, this week 
has been the Lamar Jackson to Zay Flowers touchdown throw. It's a perfect throw, beautiful throw. And then, of course, Zay Flowers with the yards after the catch. Because Zay Flowers, you know, like, you just knew. Even though it was two defenders around him, one of them being former Baltimore Raven Deshaun Elliott. Shout out to you, by the way. But anyway, hey, it had to be done. It had to be done. It ain't nothing personal. Well, a little personal because you used to play for the team. But it had to be done. But Zay Flowers, we just knew he was going to get a touchdown, even though them two Dolphins were in the area. But Lamar Jackson on that play, uh, something that a lot of people have been pointing out is that Lamar Jackson started that playoff like he was a lefty. He started that play like off like he was a lefty, and the, the secondary, they kind of moved to that side. They shied away from Zay Flowers, and then Lamar switched it up and, and threw it to Zay Flowers. Perfect strike. It was amazing. And he said on that play um, that Jackson, he decided last week in practice that he really wanted to sell it. Uh, and he said that those couple of steps to his left, that ended up freezing the Miami Dolphins defenders. Um, and with that, I was just talking to my guy, Jason, from Huddle Up Films. Y'all make sure y'all check out his YouTube channel. He was amazing at what he does, and he brought up a very, very good point. Uh, just to continue to highlight how smart Lamar Jackson is and how deep of a film study guy he is, and, and just overall the Baltimore Ravens as a whole, because he mentioned how Tua, Tua is obviously a left-handed quarterback. He's a Miami Dolphins starting quarterback. So he was thinking that maybe the, 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 the Baltimore Ravens, since they know Tua's left-handed, they know this defense, they go against a left-handed quarterback in defense, obviously going against Tua. So the Baltimore Ravens, they use that to their advantage. But with Lamar and them just flipping the whole switch like that, it's, like, it's, it's crazy. Don't you ever... Don't you ever say that he's not quarterbacky enough, and don't you ever call him just an athlete. Never again. When we when she first said that, it was extremely disrespectful back then. Before she said it, when she even thought about saying it, it was extremely disrespectful to even think that. Uh, and then everything that Lamar continues to show you and has shown you for years, that just makes that comment that much more disrespectful. So anyway. Something that's not disrespectful is the Baltimore Ravens that made the Pro Bowl. Now, there were some guys that did miss out. But, uh, again, look, I don't expect none of these guys to play in the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl is cool. Pro Bowl is a nice thing for your contract and contract negotiations and whatnot. Like, hey, I'm a Pro Bowler. <laughs> My peers voted me as one of the best players in the league. And, of course, all pro, that helps a lot, too. But let's look at the Ravens, seven Pro Bowlers that made it. Lamar Jackson. So, Lamar Jackson, pro bowler, cool, hey, let's get it, baby. Uh, but also, um, the first pro bowl select, they had four first-time pro bowlers. One of them was Tyler Linderbaum. So, in his second year, he's already a pro bowler. Second year, already there, already there. So, there were questions um, when Tyler Linderbaum first came out, is he too small to play the center position? Are his arms long enough? Tyler Linderbaum shut all that down, all of it down. Right in the Pro Bowl. And even before the Pro Bowl, like we already know that he's been a very, very good player. A, a great player, as a matter of fact. Another first time Pro Bowler is Mr. Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton, we have continued to talk about just how great of a player Kyle Hamilton is. And this is just yet a, a, another. Th this is public recognition, like, of how great of a player he is. I mean, not that he needed it, but this solidifies it even more. Somebody else, two other first-time Pro Bowlers, Justin Matabike. You think about Justin Matabike, literally his very first year starting, his very first year where he gets the most opportunity that he's, he's had in his entire career because he's always been behind somebody, but not this year, and then boom, he ends up making a Pro Bowl. That is amazing. So shout out to Justin Matabike. Uh, for making a Pro Bowl. Uh, also, some other faces who made the Pro Bowl. Roquan Smith, this is his second time making it. JT, Justin Tucker, this is his seventh time making it. Probably should have had some more on that, but hey, seven times, that's a lot. He, he already a Hall of Famer, but having seven Pro Bowls, that's a lot. But my, um, my favorite uh, on this list uh, for making the Pro Bowl, and it was also his first time making the Pro Bowl, and and I'm sure that you all watched the video of him speaking to Eric DaCosta, because I just, I felt like this was the most special Pro Bowl vote for the Baltimore Ravens, the most special person that made it, in my opinion, and that's Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen, literally this year, had everything stacked against him. And shout out to Bobby Trotter for bringing this out and, and giving us a reminder yesterday that well, Patrick Queen, with him making a Pro Bowl this year, like he had his fifth year option declined. 
when you have your fifth year option decline, you could look at that like, oh, wow, oh, okay, well, like that that's a wrap. That you're done. That this team don't want you anymore. Roquan Smith, the Baltimore Ravens, they traded for Roquan Smith last year, and he got paid the the well, the same year actually, because he got paid at the end of last season, right before regular season was done. Roquan Smith got paid, and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, I've been here. I was a first round pick in what 2020, and they ain't paid me. In fact, they declined his fifth year. So all that is right in your face, and then. They go and draft Trenton Simpson. So a lot of people were looking at Trenton Simpson. I know I was like, oh, oh, right. Oh, yeah, they, they trying to replace Patrick Queen. And they declined his fifth-year option. to. Oh, they, they probably going to trade Patrick Queen. That's what I was thinking. When they drafted Trenton Simpson, I said, oh, boy, it's a linebacker that got some speed. He can move around. He can do some different things. He could blitz. Oh, yeah, they trying to replace Patrick Queen for sure. So Patrick Queen could have took all of that. Cause he could have taken all of that, as most of us would if we on a job and been like, oh, Oh, they don't want me no more. And he could have been mopey about it. He could have been droopy about it. It could have impacted his performance. And we would have understood why, but he didn't let it. And, and he didn't let it to the point where him and Roquan Smith, both who came in this season saying, hey, we the best linebacker duo in the league, in the league. And I remember initially when I first heard people saying that, like I had my guy Noah from For the Flock, who is the, the best Ravens content creator doing it. When I had him on here and he said, oh, I, I got a hot take for you. And I said, hot take, okay. And he said that Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, the best linebacker duo in the league. And when he said that, I was like, oh, okay. I, I, I mean, I can't go against it, but I can't say I, I, I'm with it. I would love for them to be, but... Saying that, like, that, that's some pretty high praise right there. But the fact that both of them are in the Pro Bowl now, that lets it be known that their peers and the fans, too, they agree. They agree. So back to Patrick Queen specifically, the fact that he, despite everything that was going against him this year, he was able to not only overcome it, but exceed expectations and have this honor of being voted to the Pro Bowl, that's just, that's a beautiful thing. And, and I really, really love just seeing how he embraced Eric DaCosta. Eric DaCosta embraced him, and he was just so happy, man. And, and I get it, man, because he has, it's been a tough road for Patrick Queen ever since he was first drafted. But the fact that he's here now, and, <clears throat> hey, a lot of tough decisions got to be made this offseason, as they do ha have to be every offseason, but, this year for sure because with these these pro bowl votes with these pro bowl nods with the, these guys being official pro bowlers patrick queen and justin matabike they both just got that much more expensive because their agents they can use this as they should because it's business baby they can use this they can say oh my clients are pro bowlers and they need to be paid accordingly accordingly so Mm. I do not think this helps uh, with the possible re-signing of a Patrick Queen. Um, I, I do not think this helps with a possible re-signing of Justin Matabike. It does help their value, and it can help the Ravens see their value, but it also helps their pockets. And Ravens will have to come up off of some bread, so we will end up seeing. Now, uh, and some other great news for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers got voted as the Pepsi Zero Sugar NFL Rookie of the Week. So Zay Flowers, of course, the, the, the big play that we talked about earlier, he had over 100 yards against uh, those Miami Dolphins, and he made a huge impact as uh, Mr. Zay Flowers normally does. So shout out to Zay Flowers, and shout out to his consistency. Now, um, something else that had been pretty consistent uh, this offseason was the NFL seeming like they almost uh there was almost some collusion with against Lamar Jackson. And it was it was just the weirdest thing this offseason because I remember like I had never seen anything like that before where where so many teams were coming out publicly and saying, Oh, we are not gonna pursue Lamar Jackson. I don't remember that ever happening before with any player. To where a player, whether he's a free agent or whether he's on uh, the exclusive, non-exclusive, I've never seen it before where so many teams come out publicly and say, oh, we're not going to pursue that player. If they ain't going to pursue him, they're just, okay, they won't pursue him. But to come out and for so many teams to make public statements 
declaring that, oh, no, we're not going to go after Lamar Jackson. It was so weird. Weird times. Uh, but we know that um, Lamar Jackson, obviously a lot of those teams that came out and said that, and teams that didn't do anything, whether they came out and said it or not, I'm sure they're regretting. But there was a lot of rumors and people trying to justify why a lot of these teams would not pursue a Lamar Jackson. Um, and Rich Eisen, he had Adam Schefter uh, on his podcast. Um, and Rich Eisen talked about uh, Lamar Jackson being hurt, him, ha him having not finished the previous two years, and, and that being a, a possible concern. I was like, okay, that, that could be one. Even even still, I, we have seen people get hurt get hurt in a worse way and miss more time and still get signed a big deal. But, so, okay, I get that. Availability is everything. You missed the end of the previous two seasons. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, but then they brought up the, uh, the, 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 the famous rumor about Lamar Jackson's eating habits. That his eating habits were a, a, a concern for teams. And he brought up Lamar Jackson being sick. And I was like, Rich. Rich, what's going on? Like, I, and, and, and not that uh, as, a, uh, as an analyst, as a commentator, that you just have to be everything pro Lamar Jackson. God, I appreciate the people that call it like it is, they, they, and they say exactly what it is. But I was just surprised from Rich's comments because he was even somebody where recently has been brought up, uh, especially with Lamar Jackson most likely getting ready to win his second MVP. It's recently been brought up about all these teams that passed on Lamar Jackson and how those teams are doing right now. But Rich Eisen recently, he had tweeted out, he was like, oh, well, Lamar Jackson, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a free agent. He wasn't a free agent. He was on the non-exclusive franchise tag. So he was like, and he said this in this, in this interview with Adam Schefter, he was like, oh, so if any of the teams, they wanted to negotiate with Lamar Jackson, they would have just making the, they would have made the Baltimore Ravens job that much easier. And it's like, while that could be true, I love how Adam Schefter, Adam Schefter, I said, whoa, Schefter, okay. Adam Schefter let it be known, like, yeah, they could have possibly made Baltimore Ravens job that much easier, but they could have also made it harder, but nobody even tried anything. Nobody tried anything. Nobody tried to sign Lamar Jackson. I think he talked about how the Panthers and the Raiders, they checked in on him a little bit, but it was nothing ever serious. And he said there could have been teams that really made stuff hard for the Baltimore Ravens. Because I have heard this whole cop-out thing from a lot of people, not just Rich Eisen, but from other people too. Oh yeah, Ravens just would have matched any offer that they got uh, that Lamar Jackson got from another team and we'll really never know that we can assume that but we will never really know that but with uh what what Adam Schefter was saying he was like what what if a team would assign Lamar Jackson to a five six year 300 million dollar deal fully guaranteed fully guaranteed then what would the Baltimore Ravens have done well we will never know but as Ravens fans and Lamar Jackson fans, you can be both. It's okay. Uh, but I am glad that we'll never know. I, I am glad that I, I don't like the role that things, th that things went down this past offseason. Things got really ugly. But, again, hey, it's business, so it is what it is. It's part of business. But I am glad that the result is what the result is. The Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson finally – after oh a long couple of years, they finally agreed to a contract extension. He became the temporarily uh, highest paid quarterback in the league. He got his money. Ravens keep that guy. Lamar Jackson got some weapons, legitimate weapons, got a new offensive coordinator. And things right now, they couldn't be better. The Baltimore Ravens are the NFL's number one seed, and they have been the number one seed convincingly. They have beaten so many good teams. They've taken care of business against most of the bad teams, even the teams that they lost to. It's been like, oh, okay, but they got that out the way early on in the season. And it seems as if the Baltimore Ravens have certainly learned from their mistakes. They've learned how to deal with adversity in a much better way this time around. And again, 2019 continues to be brought up, but these Baltimore Ravens are showing you that they are a much different team, a much more mature team, and a team that has the experience that can help take them all the way. Baltimore Ravens, let's go get that Super Bowl.